Okay, here we go. Beatitude. So read with me. We're in Matthew 5, 1 through 3. It says, And seeing the multitudes, he went up on a mountain, and when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. That's the one that we're going to look at today. Blessed are the meek. And by the way, welcome in to Cross Fellowship Wednesday nights. I'm Pastor Scott Tom. We've been going through the Beatitudes, and it's really turning the world's idea of success and happiness up on its ear, right? It's flipping it upside down. And as we go through this, the meek will inherit the earth. It's usually the powerful will inherit the earth. The courageous will inherit the earth. The, the geeks will inherit the earth, right? In the new technology era. But Jesus says it's not the geek. It's the meek. It's the one who is under control. Not a wimp. Now, you probably heard that this is a word that often is used for horses, especially in the Greek, Roman, Greco-Roman era, horses that have been tamed. Now, a horse is a powerful, powerful animal. To pull something along, to carry riders, it's, we still use it today as a increment or as a measurement for engines, right? Horsepower. It's got so much horsepower. Well, it's because this amount, this Large animal can move this amount of equipment or weight or people. And it doesn't do you any good if that's out of control. Right? Rah! It only does you good if it's under control and manageable, usable, can be directed for good. And that's what meekness is. Meekness is taking your energy, your thoughts your attitude, your strength, your anger, even righteous anger, and directing it for good and, and keeping it in a good place. It means gentle or mild or conscientious, considerate, uh, unassuming. And in meekness, we need to have this idea of, I guess, not pulling back, not being in the background necessarily, but having a, and you could even have a powerful presence and still be meek. And it seems like, how can you do that? But there's two great examples in scripture. One is Moses. And let's read a scripture about Moses. It comes out of Numbers 12, 3. It says, Now the man, Moses, was very humble more than all men who are on the face of the earth. <laughs> now, that's quite a statement, isn't it? Here's Moses, out of all the men on the face of the earth, now, I'm not talking about Jesus in the future, during his time, he is the meekest man. Now think about this, though, Moses, he was a little arrogant starting off, thought he could deliver the people on his own, fought the Egyptian, killed him, buried him, had to go hide out in the desert, then come back. He was humbled. But this humility was under God. Because now God says, now I can use you because <clears throat> you're in a sense broken, like you break in a horse. You break in this horse. Now it's not a bad term, it just means that you take away this rebellious, injurious, you know, harmful attitude and strength, and you funnel it towards the positive. Take this power and harness it for good. Now, a horse is still an awesome looking creature. Beauty and strength is right there, right? Especially you get these Arabian stallions and these other you know horses even smaller mustangs but they're they're beautiful and but they're also powerful they're intimidating moses was called back to egypt 
And God said, I'm going to make you my mouthpiece. Use, use Aaron. Okay, I'll use Aaron a little bit, but you're it, man. And he even said, I'm going to make you like a god to Pharaoh. Now, you know, we don't take that wrong, like he's, men can become gods. It meant that I'm going to give you my power and my authority so that when you stand before Pharaoh, he knows it's me speaking through you. Because you're going to bring up plagues on the face of the earth that has never been seen and, and almost never will until the tribulation period. But they're at your command. That's incredible. So he went in there. Pharaoh, let my people go. Thus saith the Lord, who's that God? I'll show you who this God is because all your other so-called gods, the Nile and the flies and, you know, the you and, you know, and then your firstborn child is just supposed to be descendants of the gods. I'm going to, I'm going to take care of all of them. I'm going to embarrass all of them. Now, <clears throat> Pharaoh, who was somebody, right? Probably a, at the time, the world superpower. And he cap finally capitulated to, to Moses. Take your people, go, get out of here, you know? But then in the wilderness, one of God's people, Korah, challenged Moses. Well, so did Miriam and Aaron, but this was a in-your-face challenge. We don't think you should be leading. We think we should be leading. Moses didn't get mad. He didn't force the issue. He said, well, let, <laughs> let God decide. Now, sometimes in leadership, you go, do you really want to lead? I'll, I'll gladly give it to you. There's a lot of headaches in leading. But he's like, let's let God decide. Well, God decided, right? He did a new thing where he opened up the earth and he swallowed Korah and all those with him, including his family, the animals, his tents, everything straight down to hell. The meek are protected by God. Which brings us to the second example, which is Jesus. And gee, let's read the scripture on that. Matthew eleven twenty nine. There's great examples of Jesus uh, being meek and mild, but here it says, "Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly, or in other words, meek in heart, and you will find rest for your souls." See the the. I love this contrast because. He doesn't bring it up, but the, you know who he's talking about. The religious leaders, the Pharisees, the, some of the zealots, some of these people going, whether it be Sadducees or Pharisees, they were putting a burden on people and using it as their power to control people, to hurt or manipulate people to get their way, to, to enrich themselves in, in, in the temple where they were supposed to actually exchange money there because there's a temple tax but they put exorbitant rates to rip people off then that's the only place you can get the temple shekel the temple money so you're stuck and god says don't don't you're supposed to do that but don't rip them off don't yes you're supposed to examine the the sheep and stuff so that they they're not just passing off the lame and the sick and that sort of thing as their gift offering but you're not supposed to say but you can only buy from my flock over here and rip people off and and then have you know that in the marketplace jesus was the opposite he goes come to me because i'm low i'm meek i'm not going to ramrod you i'm not going to run over you i'm not going to abuse you i'm not going to take advantage of you Matter of fact, what's, what is the meek and humble thing that he's doing? I'm coming down from heaven, and you know what? Here's another definition of meekness. It's the idea that you, will, you won't expect control. You might even give up some of your own control and sacrifice for the benefit of others when you could exercise that authority or control. And doesn't Jesus do that? He could exercise his authority 
and make us f to get face down and prone before him and worship him. But he doesn't. He's the one who goes prone and, and goes back on the cross and then gets lifted up like the serpent in the desert and sacrifices his life so that his yoke, his burden is light. He's like, I will comfort you and heal you and love you, take care of you, and in return, just obey, which is the right thing. I'm asking you to obey, which is the best thing for you. I'm not asking you to obey things that are, you know, self-centered for me, Jesus or God, but these are the things that are best for you. The idea here is that this king is asking us to become his subjects, not forcing us to. Any king or conqueror comes in, look, if they want the land or the people, they just start slaughtering people and everybody else falls in line, right? Jesus went himself like a lamb to the slaughter that we might receive him. Now those who oppose him and will never give in to him, eventually he'll stand up for us and go, you know what, all these people you think you are proud, you think you're powerful, you think of all these other things, I'm gonna wipe the face of the earth with you and you're gonna become a feast for the birds of the air so that my children can inherit. And here's the thing, here's what you're inheriting. You're inheriting the earth, not a stinky, grimy, messed up, polluted earth. Now, there, don't get me wrong. I think the earth is still beautiful. But compared to what the new heaven and new earth is going to be, Paul says, man, I, it's unlawful for me. It would be illegal for me it, it, to try to describe it. That would be a crime against it and humanity to try to say, here's what it's like, but ugh, it's, it's so much better. That's what we're going to inherit. And one of the authors, one of the commentators noted that this is in the emphatic future tense, which means I am commanding or I am purposefully, purposefully saying that this will happen no matter what. I will, it will come to pass that I'll give the new heaven and a new earth to my meek, my meeklings, the ones that I love, the ones that I cherish, the ones that I have died for. So what's our attitude? If meek, it, it isn't just meek, I'm, I'm going to kind of put myself second man, second base, second position, you know, kind of not be boisterous or proud or bold. That isn't just it. It's within the framework of what God's asked us to do. It's us submitting to him and doing his will, which again is the best thing for us, so that he can accomplish his will. Let it be on earth as it is in heaven, right? Meekness means that I'm saying Scott's primary will of all this other stuff and garbage that I may want to do in this world, I'm, I'm going to delay that or put it off or say no to it altogether if it's sinful. And I, I'm going to choose his will for my life. And the reward is, well, eternal life, right? But eternal life in a paradise with the paradise creator. It's paradise because he's there. It's not just paradise because it's nice. So meekness is like Moses finally saying, I'm not doing God's will my way, killing people, but I'm going to submit to him and go in as that under shepherd, as the deliverer. Jesus, like, I'm not going to just stand in heaven and demand obedience. I'm going to come down and give myself a sacrifice for many. So we're called to follow in Jesus' footsteps, to put on the cloaks and the, the likeness of Jesus. He was meek, so should we. Amen and amen. All right, you guys. 
God bless you. See you next week.